Hello, my name is Daniel Creel with VC Golf, and today I'm going to be talking about the D plane. Um, I wanted to bring a video about the D plane. There are several videos online about the D plane, but it, specifically I wanted to bring it up because the Mevo Plus is now, FlightScope announced that the, the Mevo Plus is going to be upgrading to Fusion technology, which can read the data points that are critical for the D plane, which is your, your swing path. Uh, your angle of attack, your dynamic loft, and uh, your, your face angle at impact. And all those together create um, an image of the D plane and kind of explains why the ball curves the way it does and starts the direction the way it does. So if you can grasp this, you can use it to troubleshoot your own game on the course and better work on your game on the range and give you some sense of a direction of, of how, to, how to fix your own swing, which is, is super important to me. Um, because you don't always have a coach in front of you and uh, or you don't always have access to a coach. So again, understanding these data points is really, really critical to, to help in your game, especially with your driver and your wedges. Um, those are really low spin shots, especially chipping around the green on, on why uh, the ball is starting the direction it does and curves as much as it does. So again, what I'm going to do is jump into some software uh, that FlightScope uses for the X3. It's called the VX app. Um, I don't know what they're releasing for the Mevo Plus quite yet or what it's going to look like, but I'll show you a 3D image of what I use and how I use the D-Plane. Um, and again, I've, I've just showed them, I got a model also that uh, I use these alignment sticks and I'm going to illustrate what the D-Plane is with these alignment sticks and a 3D model of it uh, using the app. So let's go ahead and get started. So my first model is going to be, I'm going to demonstrate using alignment sticks, um, how the D-plane works, and uh, I'm going to demonstrate basically how the ball flies straight, what causes the ball to be straight pulls, and what causes the ball to curve left and right. So again, in theory, so the black one's going to represent your swing path, which is the center of the club face, what direction that the club is going at contact, the center of the club. And the yellow one's going to demonstrate the face angle. So where is the club pointing at impact? The center of the club pointing at impact. So again, here, my path is going down my target line. The white line is my target line. So that's where I want the ball to end up down the fairway or towards the green. And uh, if my, uh, my path and my club angle are straight, that causes this arrow, this area in between to be straight up and down which causes my spin axis to be uh, pretty much level. There, there's not much spin left or right, and that's going to cause a straight shot. Um, same can happen, and again, golf is, we, I can't even duplicate a straight shot. I've tried to, to, to do it so I could demonstrate it, um, but I can hit straight pushes and pulls. So here's one. This is what a pull would look like. That means my path is going to the left. My club face angle is pointing the exact same direction as my path, so my face to path is zero. Uh, my face to target is going to be negative, let's say negative three. So say my path is negative three, that would mean my face to target is negative three, but my face to path is zero. And again, that's going to be a straight shot, but it's going to go to the left and stay left to my target. Um, the same would be um, if, if it were to the right for a push, and it would be a straight push. So let's say, let's keep this negative three path, but I want my ball to go back to the target. So what's gonna happen is my path is gonna be negative three, but I want my face angle to be somewhere in between my path and my target or close to my target. So let's say negative three on path, let's say negative one on face, and now you can see the area in between, which is my D plane that's created, is now tilted to the right. So what that's gonna do is cause the spin to go to the right, and, and again, you'll see me here in, in the other, in the 3D model that I use for the for, flight scope uh, software, that the spin axis, basically it's like airplane wings. If they're tilted this way, that means that airplane's banking to the right. If they're tilted this way, that means that, so basically if the wings of the airplane are tilted to the left, that means that, that the ball's gonna go left and the airplane would, would bank and continue to go left and vice versa. If the, the wings are to the right, that means it's going to bank to the, to the right. So in this case, my plane is tilted to the right, which means the wings of the airplane are banked to the right, and that ball is going to start out slightly left of my target line and then also curve back to the uh, target but not exceed the target line unless it was an off-center hit. So, um, and the same thing for a draw. We would want, say we're positive three over here, 
we would want our face angle to fall somewhere in between the target line and the path, and that means that the ball would draw back. And again, this is critical for what kind of shot that you want to hit and how to use the D-plane. Um, you always want your face angle in between your path and uh, your target line. Um, and I'm going to give you a good example of what I see a lot of students. So let's, most of my students probably swing left. They just come over the top. And then they leave their face open. So again, the face is going to be way to the, to, the, to the right of the target. The path is way to the left. So here's where people get confused. Is the, the old perception was that the path had more influence on the start direction. So we're talking about when the, club, when the, when the ball leaves the club, what direction does it start going? Well, 75% of this top line, which is your, your face angle, determines where the ball starts. So let me say that again. Your face angle influences the start direction of the ball. I'm gonna say it a little bit different. 75% um, or the, the face influences the ball 75% uh, of the start direction with irons and 85 to 90% on a driver. So the face is king here. Um, so, so what I mean by that is your face is open to the target your club is going left. Well, this person, honestly, when, when people come in here, they're like, I swing inside out because my ball starts to the right and then it curves. Well, actually what's happening um, is you're actually swinging to the left and your face is so open, the ball starts to the right of the target. So what happens is this, this person thinks that they're swinging, um, swinging uh, to the inside, right? And the ball is going right, so what they try to do is swing a little bit left to fix it. So actually, this gets even further to the left, which creates their face having to be open even more. And then this D-plane is really super tilted to the right. So the further these get apart, the crazier and the shots get and the wilder. That D-plane is really slanted. So, so they get in trouble. And again, most people think that the swing path influences start direction. So their perception on that would be that their, their path is going to the right when actually... It's going to the left and their face is open. So again, that's why I think the D-plane is very important to understand. Um, it tells you the truth on why the ball does what it does. Uh, I'm going to go over to my flight scope software and, uh, and use the VX app. Um, and I use that with my X3 and show you a 3D model of the, uh, the D-plane. And hopefully that'll help clarify any questions that you may have. So here is my app. And uh, right now you see a shot, and this is a fairly, this is about the straightest shot that I could possibly hit. I couldn't get one dead on that line, um, but you can see that I started it out a hair left of the target, and it stayed um, left of the target, and it didn't curve very much. So let's see what the D-plane looked on that. So I'm going to go in my app, and I can just select D-plane, and here's an illustration of the D-plane. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go to a side view, and again go over what the, makes up the D-plane. So the red line is going to be my swing path at impact, so where the center of the golf club is going at impact, uh, the direction that it's going. So again, you can see that that line's going below the, uh, the surface of the ground in my target line, which is this, so the red line's going down. So my angle of attack was slightly down. It was negative 1.8, so again, that's, that's fine for an iron. That's a little bit lower or higher than I want. I would like a little bit steeper of an angle of attack. And then the green area is the center of the club face. Where is it pointed at impact? So that's going to be the face angle at attack. So where it makes first contact with the ball plus the dynamic loft. And everything in between there, this gray haze, is going to be my uh, D plane. That's the plane that's created by these two lines. So let's go and look. So you can see in this model that my red line and my green line are literally straight up and down. And you can see that this blue line, which is my spin axis created by the D-plane. So if my D-plane was tilted to the side over here, over here, you would see this blue line tilted as well. And I'll show you an illustration. But again, because these are straight up and down and above each other, that's why this shot started out straight and stayed straight because the spin axis was, was basically non-existent. It just, the ball was spinning backwards and not much to the side. So let's go to a different example. And you can see that this shot started out left of my target, 
and then attempted to fade back to the target. So you can see um, there was a little bit of curvature to it in the shadow there. So let's see what the D-plane looked on this one. All right, let's go to a different, let's go behind view. All right. It's a pretty good view of it. So here's my target line. And again, it's red through the center of the club face. It's assuming center contact. Um, the green line is pointed just a hair to the left of my target line, as you can see right here. And you can see my red line is pointed left of the green line. So my path is going left of my face. My face is in between my path and my target. And you can see my path is 4.9 left. My face to target is 1.8 left, so it's, it's a little bit in between my target line. They're both left, correct? But my face to target is less left than my path, which is exactly what you want, which creates the ball um, coming back to the target. So again, let's zoom out. Let's go to the top view, and this is a very, very good view. You can see that my path is the furthest left arrow. Here's my target line and my face is somewhere in between my target line and my path. That means that that ball is going to start out to the left and curve back towards the target. Not greater than, maybe a little bit less than. So, and you'll see this illustrated on my, my spin axis. See how that axis is now tilted to the right and it's due to the plane. You can see how that gray, gray haze right there is tilted to the right. So that's going to um, cause that plane to be tilted to the right and the ball to move uh, back towards the target. So, and here's just uh, another one. This is a draw example. And again, you can see the ball slightly curving back to the left. So let's see what this looked like here. D plane. All right, so let's look over it. And you can see how my face to path, or my path, my club path is to the right of the target line. My face is the green line, which is somewhere in between my, uh, my path and my target, which means that that ball is going to start out to the right of the target and actually start curving back to the target, but not go across the target line. And again, we can see in this example here, and we can see how my, uh, my spin axis is tilted to the left. And again, this is like the wings of an airplane. Again, if, you, if the wings of an airplane are tilted to the left like it is here, that airplane's gonna bank to the left, um, and that's what's gonna cause the curvature, and that's the same way that the golf ball um, reacts as well. And you can see here how it's curving back towards it. So I hope that explains um, a little bit about the D-plane, and again, we gotta remember that the D-plane is in theory, based off center strikes. Um, so what that means is it's reading the center of the club face on a center strike, and that's what the ball, how the ball is going to react. And again, we all know that we don't hit in the center of the club face more most of the time. We more often hit towards the heel or the hosel or thin or, or high on the club face. And again, that's going to have some different effects on the ball uh, and the spin. So I'm going to illustrate. Uh, basically what a center strike would do. So a center strike is going to hold true with our D-plane theory, okay? So this is a center strike here, as you can see. And you can see how the club face just naturally gets to close through. And again, that ball would react exactly like I demonstrated on the D-plane. So let's go to a... Um, this is going to be a hosel strike. So when the ball hits the hosel or towards the hosel, it's going to make the toe spin in and the hosel will go backwards. And it's actually going to shut the face down a little bit. And they call it the gear effect. So if the, the hosel goes backwards, which is counterclockwise, um, the ball is like a gear that's going to go the opposite direction, which is going to be clockwise. So a hosel strike is going to create a fade spin for a right-handed golfer. Okay? So, um, and again, that would, that would be true for a... A lefty as well but again it's gonna so basically it's gonna go counterclockwise and then the ball is gonna spin clockwise which is a fade spin um, and here we're gonna illustrate this in a faster motion and you can see that like quick that club face shuts down 
compared to this center strike. See how that club face stayed square to the target and to the plane? And then now I'm going to show you an extreme toe shot. So here's a toe shot. See how the club face goes open? And it actually twists, and that's called the torque of the club, and it's called the gear effect on the ball, which, again, the toe is opposite. The toe is going to go clockwise. It's going to be in backwards clockwise, which is going to cause the ball to rotate counterclockwise and cause a strong, you can see here, left spin of 680 degrees. So let's look at that again. See how that's, that's amazing, isn't it? And again, this was, I think, with a 9-iron. And once you start getting a driver in there, I mean, that torque really starts twisting that face uh, a lot, and it really affects the spin. So again, the D-plane theory still holds true somewhat, but then you got to start factoring in uh, off-center hits. And again, uh, our launch monitors don't really tell us where the, the balls are hit. I do have a GC quad here that does tell us, uh, so we can actually kind of figure out the gear effect and kind of calculate it in there. Um, but again... It, it, it plays difficult, but you're going to have to use your own feedback to, uh, to gather that. But again, uh, the D-plane is super duper important. And uh, again, I would assume it all center strikes and, and, and apply it like you're center striking it. Um, so let's go. I'm going to close just real quick. So my advice to you is to determine whether you need the D-plane or not. The data, I think, is super important. You don't have to be a professional. You don't have to, to be a guru or, or using it every day. But again, I think it's worth the upgrade. Um, I think it's useful for everybody to understand uh, why the ball does what it does and how the curvature works of the ball in the start direction because now it can get you to accurately start knowing what's going on on the course. Uh, you can determine whether it's your face angle or your path. Um, my advice to you is to find a stock shot. So you need to know what kind of shot shape you like um, with your driver and with your irons and with your wedges. Again, mine are a little bit different. I prefer a draw with my irons. My driver, uh, I actually prefer a fade. So I, I apply the D-plane using, using my shot shape because we don't all hit it straight. And again, the way I did, demonstrated it was, was straight. So if you want to hit that draw, you need your path to be a little bit in to out at contact, right? But you need the face to be face to the right as well, but not close to the target or open, or yeah, not close to the target or not open to your path. So again, you have a goal swing. So what you need to do is define your stock shot, apply the D-plane to uh, to teach yourself that, that stock shot and to monitor your, your, your swing path and uh, your face direction is my best advice. But again, I do think this data is super critical and super useful. But again, if you're just using the, the Mevo Plus uh, for, for just your launch monitor entertainment, playing E6 or TGC, things like that, then you may not want the, uh, the D-plane information. But I think if you have access to it, you have a unit that's very, very good, I think it's useful to, to upgrade for the $1,000 and, uh, and, and, to, and to use it. And uh, it'll make you better, I promise. If you, if you know how to apply it, um, it'll, it'll make you a better golfer. So... I use the D-plane pretty much in every one of my instructions. That's how important it is. Um, and again, you don't have to understand it 100%, but if you understand it 75%, it'll improve your game. So if you have any questions or comments, this once you start diving into it and when they release the actual uh, the software update um, or the firmware update, um, I bet you'll have more questions. So just go to my comments, post, and uh, I'll get back to you as quick as possible. Um, I constantly post videos. Uh, of swing drills and things like that. So visit VC Golf uh, on YouTube. You can actually find us on uh, Facebook and also I have an app called VC Golf. You can go there and there's swing drills plus there's in-app lessons that you can that you can upload videos and then we can help troubleshoot some things there. But um, I am going to post another video later that's going to bring in your horizontal plane which is another new point on the Mevo Plus um, and how to apply the D plane to the H plane and uh, again that's when it starts getting a little bit more complicated but it is super useful information and it'll really help you understand the golf swing and the physics of it. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe and uh, keep checking back with us for, for new content. Thanks.